Hi, welcome to my video where today we're going to talk about how to write equations. We're going to be translating from verbal sentences to algebraic equations and vice versa. Um, we're also going to talk about how to set up consecutive integer equations, whether it's for consecutive integers, consecutive odd integers, and consecutive even integers. So stay tuned for that. All right, let's take a look. We're going to start off by writing equations, and we're going to translate this first sentence. My first sentence says, twice a number x divided by 4 is 9. Now, twice a number means that we are multiplying by 2. So twice a number x divided by 4. So that whole phrase, twice a number x divided by 4 is 9. Now, when we do divided by, we're going to stay away from using that classic division symbol, you know, the horizontal line with the dot and the dot. Instead, we want to represent divided by as a fraction. Now, is, what mathematical symbol do you think is? Is. It's the equal sign. So, let's take a look. This would look like twice a number x divided by 4 is 9. Okay, let's try the next one. A number b divided by 3. So, again, that divided by, so we're going to keep that in fraction form. A number b divided by 3 is 6 less than a number C. So now let's, let's look at this. A number B divided by 3 is, so that word is means our equal sign. Now, 6 less than a number C. We should know at this point, if we see this word than, and I have a video about this as well, that than is one of those flipping words. 6 less than a number C actually means C minus 6 because then tells you to reverse. If I said 3 less than 7, 3 less than 7 would mean 7 minus 3. So if I say 6 less than C, that means C minus 6. Those can sometimes be a little tricky. Okay, 10 more than X times 6 is 11 more than y times 4. All right, 10 more than. I'm going to highlight that word than again. Than is showing up. So 10 more than x times 6. So first of all, x times 6 would be 6x. And if I'm doing 10 more than 6x, this should look like 6x plus 10. Is is my equal sign. And then it's 11 more than, another flipping word, 11 more than y times 4. So y times 4 would be 4y. And if I'm doing 11 more than y times 4, or 4y, it would look like 4y plus 11. Let's try the next one. More words. The difference of x and y. So what operation is difference? It's subtraction. The difference of x and y is the same as. So the difference of x and y, so x minus y is the same as, that phrase is the same as, is our equals. Now, three times the sum. So three times the entire sum. That's going to mean we need parentheses. Three times the entire sum of x and 2. So three, open parentheses, x plus 2. Now, if you don't have those parentheses, it's going to be wrong. Because then it would just be three times x. Think about that. So if I do three times the sum, that sum needs to be in those parentheses, that x plus 2. All right, a couple more. The sum of x and 3, all right, so the sum of x and 3, all divided by 2. So think about that. How would I set that up? We know division is going to be a fraction. We're going to set it up as a fraction. We're not going to use the division symbol. The sum of x and 3, all divided by 2. So X, in, x plus 3 would be in my numerator, divided by 2. So the sum of x and 3, all divided by 2, is equal to x squared. Now remember, squared is an exponent, and it's the second exponent. It's 2, it's the second power. So it's going to be x to the second power. That's what x squared looks like, x to the second power. Good. I've got one last translating problem for us. This is actually going to be the quickest one. The perimeter P of a square is, so let's start this. P is, so that's P 
equals four times the length of a side s. Four times the length of a side s. Now, we know times, we are past using the multiplication x or even the raised dot. And we don't even need parentheses. If I want to do four times s, we know that side by side means multiply. Side by side means multiply. So it's just p equals 4s. It's a very tiny equation. And that's it. Okay? Now we're going to take a look at consecutive integers. So the first thing we have to know when we set up a consecutive integer problem Okay, the first thing we have to know when we're setting up a consecutive integer problem is we have to define the variable. We have to tell the reader, okay, so whoever we're setting up the problem for that's going to read our problem, we have to tell the reader what the variables stand for, or what our variable expressions stand for. So consecutive, now the word consecutive means one after another. One is consecutive to two, two is consecutive to three, three is consecutive to four. So one after another, you don't skip anything. So I'm going to tell the reader that n, you can pick any variable, but I'm going to use n, n is going to stand for the first integer, okay? n is going to represent the very first integer. Now, if the first integer was, let's say, 5, what's the next integer after 5? It would be 6. Well, how do you go from 5 to 6? You simply add 1. So if n is the first integer then n plus 1 would be the second integer, right? So if n was 5, let's say, if this was 5, the next integer would be 5 plus 1, which is 6. How would you then get to the next integer? It would be the 5, the original 5, plus 2. So n plus 2 would actually be my third integer. Okay, so now we're going to try some practice problems along with that first skill of just consecutive integers. So here it says find the three consecutive integers whose sum is 123. So we would have to first define the variable, just like we did before. n is going to stand for the first integer, n plus, whoops, n plus 1 would stand for the second integer, n plus 2 would stand for the third. And if it says find the three consecutive integers whose sum is 123, that would mean that n, the first integer, plus, because notice it says the sum, the second integer, plus the third integer should equal 123. And just to make sure you see where all of these are coming from, I'm going to color code for just a moment. So n is my first integer, then n plus 1 is my second, and then n plus 2 is my third. And if I add all three of those up, it's going to it should give me the sum of 123. Now, when I teach this lesson, I usually don't have us even solve it just yet. Solving's easy. You're just combining your like terms, solving for n. That's not a big deal. I solve equations in another one of my lessons that's on YouTube here. Um, but for right now, I'm just setting up the equation. So let's set up the next one. Find the four consecutive integers whose sum is negative 62. So now it's saying <coughs> four of them n is going to stand for the first integer, n plus 1 is the second, n plus 2 is the third. But now it's saying I need four integers. So the next natural progression is to make n plus 3 the fourth integer. So ready? I'm going to follow this same format that I did before. n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 plus n plus 3 equals negative 62. Now, these parentheses really don't mean anything. They didn't mean anything over there in the other problem too. But I did put them there just so you can see everything separated out. The first integer from the second to the third. But you definitely don't need the parentheses. They're not of any value here. Again, just to separate. Now, next thing we're going to talk about is consecutive even integers. Now, think of an even number. Think of the next even number that comes after it. How do you go from one even number to the next even number? You add two, right? You don't add by one. So if I let n be the first integer, and it's an even number, let's say 10, the way I go from 10 to 12 is I would add two. So n is the first integer. n plus two would be the second integer. So think about it. The first number was 10. 
the way you'd get to the next one is 10 plus 2. How do you think you get to the third integer? You add an